children and I uh, thank you for being here today uh, before we start get to your Bible and flip to Genesis 15 uh, as we start we're going to start with a word of prayer so close your eyes and let's just bow our head for prayer father Lord we thank you for today and thank you for your word Lord as we read and study we pray that we will have understanding that Lord that not only for us but also for generations to come we can share of your promise and your faithfulness. So Lord, we commit this word to you and commit ourselves to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So welcome again. And I know that some of you will um, have uh, opening school on Monday and you've had a long holiday. I wish you well as you do that. And some of you are going into midterms and others are doing their end of year exams. So all the best with that, right? Um, so as we start, very interesting scripture, this Genesis 15, and it starts with something so interesting. It says, after this, the word of the Lord came um, to Abram in a vision. You know what? Unless you read the Bible before and after, you know, it's like reading a novel and then halfway through you read a chapter, you wouldn't get the right context. So take some time read this Genesis, read it and get to know the story really well. But this is a great promise in verse 1 that the Lord says, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. That's what the Lord is saying. And stop there for a moment, because sometimes we ask ourselves the question, does this apply to me or is this Abram's story? It's not. This story applies to you as well. Because it is confirmed not only in this uh, part of the of reading in Genesis, it is also confirmed in the New Testament. Very quickly, put your finger to it in Romans chapter 4, 13, and I'm going to read it. It says, it is not by law that Abraham, note his name has changed, and his offering received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith, by his faith, by his belief in God, this is how he is the righteousness. And do you know what? This is how he becomes the heir to the world. So do we say that we are his descendants? Yes. Do we say that we have also a promise because of Abraham? Yes, we do. And we have the greatest promise of all, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go back again to that scripture that says that. Now, we are going to go, as we go back to the scripture, we um in verse seven that's where i've jumped to the lord is so it's, it's so interesting the lord says to him the lord also says to him i am the lord who brought you out of ur and of the chaldeans to give you this land and to take possession of it so he's now jumped god has now told him hey um you are the righteousness i, I am your shield I'm, I'm your great reward and he showed him of this promise. Abraham has believed in it. And uh, and then now he's talking about Ur. But let's go back a little bit before that. Because um, the Abraham asks him something. And Abraham, who believes in the reward, that God is his reward, he asks him something. So we're jumping back up to verse 2. And Abraham said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? So it's not that Abraham is saying, I don't believe in that promise, but he is asking, okay, Lord, you know, the way you would ask your mom or your dad, okay, mom, I know we ate chips for lunch and we eat chicken for dinner. Can we have ugali and sukumawiki for dinner? You know, you, it's okay to ask that even when you're given a gift, you can still ask. So he's asking, I still remain childless. And then you know what Abraham says? Not only do I remain childless, the heir to my things will be Eliza. Eliza is a servant. So in those olden times, you could uh, adopt a servant who is able to take all your possession. And I know you're asking yourself, what is this word heir? Spelled H-E-I-R. Heir means that uh, you're the one who is by law accepted to get the things which belong to in this instance it's your master but also let's say if it's a parent an uncle somebody who's a relative and they say on my death if i die 
I want my car to go to this person. I want my house to go to this person. And so an heir is somebody who is able to get what uh, rightfully theirs because the other relative has said that they can get it. So when we say we are heirs, the way Abraham is, is that means that we are rightfully given what belongs to us. It already belongs to us because we are children of God. So, uh, I, so that part... God says to him, Abraham, no, Eliza is not going to get your property. You will get a child from your own body. And later on, we do see that there's a child who comes in. Then in verse 7, quickly it turns and God tells him about now, um, he says to him, I'm the Lord who brought you out of Ur, out of the Chaldeans and to give you this land to take possession of it. And then again, the, uh, Abraham asks, Lord, how am I going to know that? The Lord says, well, let's draw up an agreement. And so another word for covenant is agreement. So he says, so he tells him, get five animals, five of them, and a heifer, a goat, and a ram, and two birds, turtle dove, and a pigeon. And he cuts them into two, puts them on opposite sides. The birds are not cut. Maybe they're too small. I don't know, but they are not cut up. And then you know what? The Lord walks right through this and he walks through with a boiling pot and a torch that is what abram sees so do you know what the lord opens the lord goes through this um by himself in the olden days what it would mean is that two kings would go through and say we are promising something and of that promise um and of that promise if i don't do what is what is right then i will end up as dead as these carcasses on both sides so god does not ask abram to do that he himself goes through the carcasses and so he's that is how he gives his promise um so what are we saying about this that the lord himself and we know that christ died on the cross um, for this and once he died on the cross that if we believe in him then we are saved what the word is telling us now is that we should not fail in having faith to God having faith with God is a journey and you know what it's not like you're going to get everything as you want it but that journey shapes us it shapes us with how we are going it develops you but know that God will not fail you. At the end, God is always there for you. Um, so our faith should also inspire us that we don't stay in a place which is comfortable, in a comfort zone. Know that the Lord will take you to places which are not so easy, but he is there with you. You know when we say in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There you go. You will walk through the valley and the shadow of very many things, but the Lord is with you. Genesis chapter 15 verse 6 says, And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness.